Hey everybody, this is Peter with Tabletop Gaming Guild and today I'm coming to you with a review and a look at a brand new item that we just recently received and that is Total Party Kill Bestiary Volume 2 Monsters to Challenge Veteran Heroes and this is produced by 2C Gaming. It is 5e compatible for uh, Dungeons and Dragons so if you are running Dungeons and Dragons all the creatures inside here, you can drop them into your game and they're going to mathematically fit into that game. Uh, but there's a lot more than just creatures in here. There are a lot though. There's about a hundred creatures in this book that you'll be able to put into your game. Um, but more than that, there is a lot of information that they put into each of the creatures. They're going to give you lore for the creatures. They're going to give you tips and tricks on how to run those creatures to make them easier or slightly more difficult. Um, but there's a lot of really great information for dungeon masters, for game masters who are running their games of Dungeons and Dragons and looking maybe for some more creatures to throw at their party. So let's go ahead. We're going to dive in. I'm going to put the camera down. We're going to take a look at the book and we're going to see what all is in here and maybe if this book is right for you in your game. So let's go ahead and take a look, everybody. All right, everybody. So this is a closer look now at Total Party Kill Bestiary Volume 2 Monsters to Challenge Veteran Heroes, written by Ryan Service, produced by 2C Gaming. And yes, this is 5e compatible. So if you're playing Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition, this book and the creatures within are for your game. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive right on in. So like most books, we're going to have our authors listed up here at the top left. We've got editors, artists listed, the open game license, the uh, OGL for 5th uh, edition is listed as well. And then we have our table of contents. We're going to get an introduction. We have monsters broken down by their types, and they're going to be listed through the book alphabetically. Within each of these types, there are going to be a handful, uh, maybe three to four different creatures that fit that type. Um, those are going to be in the book as well as then we have an appendix, three appendix at the end, monsters by group, monsters that favor, and monsters that foil. So in our introduction, we do get the, the kind of the generic preface of the book, what the book is about. And then also we do get uh, a kind of standout violent content warning. They want to go ahead and give everybody a heads up that the creatures you're going to be seeing in here, some of them are going to be pretty ghastly. Um, and so they want to give everybody a good heads up what they're getting themselves into. So I appreciate that. And then I think the thing that I love the most about this introduction is the acknowledgments section. So here we see a listing of all the different uh, people who helped out with writing some of these creatures. And I've seen that a lot of books where they have an acknowledgment section, but usually it's just a list of names and that's about it. Uh, doesn't make it easier for you to find them uh, after you've read the book, maybe through their social media pages. Um, it's just a list of names. This one goes a step above the rest that I've seen. They have color photos of each and every one of the people in here who were helping to write the book. They list their name. They give you even a paragraph biography about them, letting you know maybe where you would have seen them previously or where you can go and find them in the future. A um, couple of names that I recognized right away were Jonathan Pruitt and Jim Davis from their YouTube channel, WebDM. So if you've seen any of those videos, here are a couple of people that you may know and some uh, some writing by them for your D&D game. I also recognized a couple other names, uh, Celeste Conowich and Gabe Hicks. I know both of them from writing in articles of Arcadia for uh, MCDM and Matt Colville's game. So I really, really want to say I appreciate 2C Gaming's um, idea of just really promoting the people who helped them write this book. I appreciate it a lot. Um, thank you guys for doing that. More, more companies need to follow this suit, uh, helping to promote those out there who are writing for games like this. So great job. Uh, we go into a section next after that is what is in this book. It's going to tell you a little bit about what's in the book, but when we know it, it's a bunch of creatures, it's a bunch of monsters, it's a bunch of high level monsters that you get to throw at your party. Um, and hopefully not total party kill, but you never know. Maybe that's what you're going for. Um, they do break down a little bit about monster classifications here, the different types. There are artillery, there are brute, controllers, elite, leaders, lurkers, skirmishers, and soldiers. It gives you a paragraph about each of those. 
Um, and then it has a little teeny section here called favors and foils, which to me is something very new and interesting and something that I hope, again, other companies might decide to adopt. And that is, it gives you a better understanding of the different character types, classes, um, and abilities that they have that are going to either favor them when they fight these creatures or foil them when they fight these creatures. Um, so again, favors, this says it's which character features, classes, and abilities perform well against this monster and foils which character features, classes, and abilities perform poorly against this monster. Um, so each monster in this book will have a little section that tells you here are the different character types and player types that are going to that are going to be used best against this creature and which ones are going to perform probably poorly against this creature. And I like that as a DM, as somebody who is putting together encounters, that's going to help me know, OK, these are the types of characters that I have in my game. These are the types of monsters that I can throw in and say it's going to give them a little bit of a harder time or a little bit of an easier time as they go through. Um, yeah, so I think that's pretty fun, favors and foils, and we're going to take a look at one of these creatures here in a second, but before we do that, we'll flip over to the next, pa next page. Each page, again, for the characters or for the creatures, they're going to show you some lore, some tactics on how to utilize those creatures, uh, plot hooks, how to introduce them in your game. Uh, sometimes that's the hard part is like, man, why would this, why would this creature even show up in my game? Well, there's going to be at least, I think, three plot hooks for each of the creatures, giving you a quick little paragraph or uh, with an idea of how to introduce them into your game. Why are the characters uh, going to be encountering them? Also, I love this. It gives you a treasury section, a little treasure section where you can figure out what kind of treasures would best fit this type of creature so the treasure section is awesome and then even they give you some ecology about the uh, the monster's home and and the kind of area that it would live in so lots of really good stuff and uh, it gives you a little bit more information over here about uh, the different levels of challenge that can happen with high level characters um, and they break that down for you, talking about easy encounters, medium encounters, hard encounters, and even deadly encounters. And then they give us a nice list of every single creature that is in the book, and they list them here uh, in order of challenge rating. So the easiest challenge rating in here is a four, and that is our Lily Dragon Wormling. And then if we turn the page, we're going to get two more full pages showing you all the creatures that are going to be in this book with the highest level uh, challenge rating creatures being 30, the Earl King. Um, so it's it's going to be some really, again, some some kind of low level character uh, creatures, but with some really high level creatures as well. I mean, two 30 level uh, challenge rating creatures, 329, 327. Those are some really deadly creatures that you could be throwing at your party. Um, so I love that they did a, kind of a very broad spectrum, but they're really leaning into those hard hitting creatures. All right. So the first uh, type of creature that is listed in the book are the abhorrors. And again, like I said, each type of creature is going to have at least three creatures within it. And so in the abhorrors, these are creatures that um might show up if there's a lot of necromancy happening in your game and these are uh, creatures that have um they've 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 shown up because of the malpractice of necromancing necromancers um so we've got uh, the bone splinter is one creature that is added into this game from the, uh in the abhorrors we also have a tangle of limbs which is just as scary as all get out i i it's hard for me to even think about that one um and then we have the voided soul so we have three of these creatures all of them falling underneath the overarching uh title of abhorrors for each of these creatures we get a section on lore for utilizing them and the information that we can give out for lore it shows us even difficulty class here so 11 16 and 22 so maybe you're uh, players want to try to make a lore check or a history check and trying to figure out what do I know about these creatures? Well, they give it to you right there. Here's the difficulty class. This is what they're going to be rolling against. And if they roll 11, 16, or 22, then this is the information they can gain about the creature uh, during the fight, before the fight, whenever you give them that chance. There are There's a section here on tactics, how you can best utilize this creature um, to make it a difficult encounter for your players. 
And then down here, we see a little, it almost looks like a post-it note. The post-it note gives you a little bit of flavor text in there. And then this is where you will find your favors and foils. And so for the blown, bone splinter, it's telling us that um, the, the characters and their abilities that are favored against the bone splinter are barbarians, clerics, uh, people with healing or high hit points, and paladins. So those are all the uh, character classes and or abilities that might help your players fight a bone splinter. But those who are foiled by the bone splinter, it lists as bards, people who like to seek cover, rogues, stealth, or warlocks. So again, I think this is a really interesting thing as a DM, as somebody who has to build encounters, they're giving me a little bit of a, of a look behind the screen about which characters and those characters' abilities might perform more poorly against this creature. So it's gonna let me know, am I really making a really, really deadly encounter with this creature? So after the tactics section, um, there are there's a section on plot hooks and they give us three different plot hooks for uh, the Bone Splinter. So I'm gonna go ahead and read a couple of those just to kind of give you a little bit of an idea about what it is that they're providing. One of the plot hooks is called A Bone to Pick. It says, an adult copper dragon has something caught in its teeth and requires a specific tool to remove it. A particularly sharp bone found only in a Bone Splinter. The dragon will pay handsomely for a pristine specimen provided it's delivered promptly. We also have one called The Night After the Marrow. A paladin is seeking the marrow of a bone splinter for a healing concoction to soothe his aging body. He was once the victim of a bone splinter, and though he healed his broken bones, the ache remains. And then the last one here that they give us is A Marrow Escape. A halfling thief dropped the loot from a recent score right in the middle of a pit containing several bone splinters. He would like it back and is willing to split the bounty with whomever helps recover the lost items. So those are three really great plot hooks that you could utilize in introducing this creature to your game. Uh, and I think that's a really helpful part of each of the creatures, giving the DMs an idea of how do I introduce this character. Also, we have the treasure section that each of these are going to have. This one says the body of a bone splinter is made extremely durable by the necromantic magic which sustains it. When slain, this durability remains within the many bones that once composed its body, with typically enough intact bones remaining from a typical splinter to create a powerful, heavy armor known as bone armor. Doing so requires 24 hours of strenuous activity and a successful DC-18 intelligence check using Smith's tools, spoiling the bones on a failure. So you have the ability that if you fight one of these bone splinters, you're going to have enough bones remaining that you can try to fashion your very own set of bone armor. And it lists here how much the bone armor would cost, 3,000 gold pieces. It also says here that it gives you an armor class of 17 plus your dexterity modifier with a max of two. So you could get up to a 19 armor class utilizing this. Also, you have to have strength 16 to even wear it and you get disadvantage on stealth and it weighs 10 pounds. So a really cool item that could be gained by fighting this incredibly uh, difficult creature. Uh, as usual, we get the, the very normal uh, character or the, the creature stat block. So if you've played fifth edition, you know what the stat blocks look like. This is very uh, normal. It lets you know the size of the creature, its alignment. It gives you its armor class, hit points, and speed. It gives you any of its traits and actions. All of that's going to be listed over here. But again, I love that they also provide you with that tactics section on how to run this creature. Because sometimes I look at a stat block and I think, ah, that's great and all, but I don't really know know what to do to run this creature. And they give you that. They should give you a section on tactics. And it even breaks it down to easier tactics and harder tactics. So maybe you want to learn how to run this at a harder, uh, a harder game for your for your players, easier easier or harder tactics, whichever one you would like. So we also have Tangle of Limbs, like I mentioned. Same thing here. You get your section on lore, your section on tactics. You get your plot hooks. You do get again that little post-it note image that is here as well with the favors and foils you get the Tangle of Limbs stat block. 
some treasure that you might be able to get once fighting and destroying the tangle of limbs the ecology again the uh, the type of area that that creature might call home um and so that is pretty stinking awesome i think it's amazing um there's a lot of really good stuff here and then we have the voided soul so that's the third one in this section of abhorrors same thing here you're going to get your lore your tactics your plot hooks the voided soul though if you take a look real close at the post-it note portion of it it has the red skull this means again that this of these three this is going to be the deadliest of these creatures as you possibly throw it at your um at your players so be on the lookout for that skull if you want to get really really heavy handed with it and uh and again challenge rating for a lot of these creatures is going to be high that voided soul is a challenge rating of 16. so a lot of really cool stuff happening here and after the abhorrors we continue alphabetically with these creatures and their types so we jump into acrylic oozes there's so many different types in this book again if i take us back to the table of contents there are one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty four different types of monsters and within those types there are going to be at least three maybe four creatures So that is a lot of creatures that you are going to get to look at in this book. Now, I'm not obviously going to show you all of these creatures. That would take a really, really long time. But I do want to go ahead and throw in, this would be subjective. This is my thing. The one drawback for me is um, not all of the art in the book is phenomenal. There is some really nice art in this book. Um, and I'm going to at least show you, try to show you one of the pieces of art that I really, really like from the book, but it's kind of a mishmash and, um, the level of detail that each piece of art goes into is, is very different. And again, I understand that because, um, art is expensive and I'm, I'm sure they were out there trying to find the best art that they could for this book. Some of it's great. And again, even this one, just a black and white piece of art, but it is a really intriguing work of art this this tangle of limbs will show up in my nightmares at some point i am sure um so it's not just that some of them are color and some of them are black and white um but it's just varying degrees of level of artistry and again it's very subjective not everybody's going to agree with me on that and that is okay but take a look at this work of art uh it is pretty phenomenal uh the shark in here is really cool and for scale that is the ship that the characters would be on this is insane whatever this creature is nuts this megalodon of a shark with this huge fin on it is crazy and then we've got this dragon in the background as well wrapping around and it looks like some kind of crustacean creature down here in the water also and then we see looks like almost kraken tentacles as well this is a really cool piece of art that i love from the book um, and there are some other ones as well that i really enjoy but again not every piece of art is uh quite to the same level as each other so it's just going to be kind of a, a mix and again subjective but if there was anything that I was at all going to say slight, even slightly negatively about this book is that the art isn't consistently knocking you out of the park. But again, that's going to be most books and art is really expensive. But that being said, there is a ton of art in this book, which I find very helpful because I like being able to see an idea of um, of these creatures. What do they look like? Can I show it to my players so they, they can get a better understanding? Because I, I tell you, I can't always explain um, very well in words what everything looks like in the game. And uh, so a book that shows me with a lot of art, I think that's fantastic and it's super helpful. So this book has a lot of art, some black and white, some color. Um, some of it is phenomenal. Some of it is okay. Um, but again, the thing that really blows me away is each of these creatures has so much information for me as a dm 
It's giving me plot hooks. It's giving me possible treasure, which gosh, I mean, seriously treasure. Sometimes it's hard for me to think about what would they even be able to gain from this creature. Um, they give me that section as well. How to run them. The tactics section is huge. And again, I really do love the idea of the favors and foils so that I can better understand which type of players this is going to be easier against and which one it's going to be more difficult against. So now that we've taken a really quick, just cursory look at this book, because again, 24 character uh, creature types with maybe like two to four different creatures underneath each of those character types. It is a lot of creatures to throw at your party. Um, this one for me is a no brainer. It is a definitely go out there and get this book. And again, this is volume two. Um, and now that I've got volume two, I think I got to get volume one. I got to get a look at all the creatures that were in that book as well. So again, that was Total Party Kill Bestiary Volume 2 Monsters to Challenge Veteran Heroes by Ryan Service and produced by 2C Gaming uh, for your 5E Dungeons and Dragons game. So let's go ahead and uh, call that a day, everybody. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you, if you liked it, go ahead and give a like and a sub sub subscribe. And uh, I'm Peter with Tabletop Gaming Guild. You can check out all of our stuff at table, tabletopgamingguild.com where we have our podcast uh, available for people. You can also check out all of our videos on our YouTube channel where we review games, we review books for gaming, uh, all sorts of good stuff. We even do playthroughs of games as well that you can watch in case you're interested in seeing what a game might look like before you play it. And uh, thank you again for watching everybody. And until we talk again, Keep on playing games.